am here today with the wonderful, beautiful Nikki Blonsky. Thank you for being here today, Nikki. Hi, thank you for having me, Taylor. Of course. So we all, of course, know Nikki from Hairspray, which is just like, you know, one of those movies that just has lasted throughout time. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't believe it sometimes. Like, sometimes my friends and I who were in it, like, you know, we'll yeah. talk and I'll say, we'll look at each other and go, oh my gosh. Because one of my friends is in town right now and he was in the movie. His name is Hollywood Jade. He's actually the choreo resident choreographer for Canada's Drag Race now. And he was in Harrisburg with me and he's out here now and we were talking and we were like, so remember when we were on set? And I was like, do you know that that was like almost 14 years ago? And we were like, oh my gosh, like how it's wild how it either seems like it was just yesterday or 597 years ago. Like it's crazy. Right. Yeah. It's so what, what year did you graduate high school? So I graduated in 2006. Okay. Wow. That's a very long time ago now <laughs> that I think of my <laughs> 2021. That was, yeah. 2006 was the year I graduated high school um, and was when I started auditioning for Hairspray movie. Yeah. So before that, where did you grow up and how did you get into, you know, the entertainment industry? So I grew up on Long Island in New York. So Long Island is a suburb uh, in New York and it's, you know, its own little island off of Manhattan and it's nice and quiet. Um, and I really, I love growing up there. I always say it was like the perfect place to grow up. Um, the best way I can like associate Long Island, like my town was a town called Great Neck and that's actually where they um, like, they filmed The Great Gatsby and movies like that. So that's what it's known for. But um, I grew up in Great Neck and just, you know, a regular kid. My parents both worked super hard, um, two jobs, you know, to make ends meet and always just made sure that we had what we needed. And they were my softball coaches. And, um, but they always knew that there was a singing passion there with me that I just wouldn't shut up from the age of three. Like, <laughs> From the age of three, I'll never forget my nan had a record player, um, a record player. We're not talking about CDs, kids. We're not talking about MP3s. No, no, no. A record player. And she would take out her records and put it on. And I remember the first time hearing like the, the needle hit the record and just knowing how special that was. And she taught me, my grandmother taught me how to jitterbug at the age of eight. I mean, so it was, I was very much encouraged to sing and dance. Yeah. You know, nobody else in my family really did it, but they just knew that I had so much fun doing it, that they were like, go have fun, do it. And I started singing lessons at the age of eight. I went to my parents and I was like, I really want singing lessons. Yeah. And, you know, they made it work and they got me singing lessons and yeah. And they just always believed in me when, you know, I look back now and I'm like, wow, most parents, you know, when a kid says, oh, I want to be an actor or be an entertainment parent. So like, oh, no, 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 <laughs> go, right. go the other way. You want to go right? You want to go left? No, you're go going left. to college. <laughs> yeah, you're going to college. My parents very much said, okay, um, we want you to still submit for college. And, yeah. you know, and I did, I did all college submissions. I got into some really great schools that I'm super proud of that I like never get to talk about that I got into these schools. Ooh, um, where'd you get into? I got into Fordham. I got into Marymount. I got into Pace, uh, Hofstra. Wow. I was super excited um, just to be accepted. I was actually going to go to Long Island University, CW Post, and then the night before my senior prom, I got hairspray. So wait, but, wait, wait. You found out that you got hairspray the night before senior prom? Yeah, it was like magic on magic. <laughs> I got, I have like the biggest chills right now because I'm like the, I'm like the biggest like nostalgia nerd that like, that is so cool. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, you know, prom was so, I was excited for prom to begin with, but I was just excited just because, you know, it's prom, everybody's getting together. And then, and for people, I don't know if it's like this everywhere, but I grew up in Jersey. Prom on the East Coast 
oh. is like because you know then everybody goes down the shore and it's like it's it's an event it's, it's wild a huge <laughs> event like i remember like it's planned out for weeks pre-promise planned out which parents are gonna host pre-prom and it's you yeah. usually have like it's catered i'm like what the heck's going on <laughs> it's like it's almost like a mixture between like a bar mitzvah and a wedding just like everybody's just like buzzing around prom week um on long island and on the east coast so you have that yeah that's exactly right i remember it was super busy and everybody was just running around doing their own thing getting their hair and makeup done nails and i was holding this secret that i had auditioned for this movie for six months i hadn't told any of my friends and how then did you hold that at, like that had to have been so hard like I find hard. out good news and I have to like tell at least like five people like at least <laughs> I I have you know what it's something it's superstition that's what it is with me I'm like if I tell people the good news and the good things are gonna go away so let's just wait until they happen yeah that's my whole like way of thinking so um I didn't tell any of my friends and then I had to tell them at pre-prom I stood up in front of all of them and they were all theater kids um and they some of them had even come up to me and told told me like hey I saw online there casting the movie Hairspray, you should audition. And I'm like, I was knee deep in auditions. I was like already like four months in, but I couldn't tell them that. So I was like, oh guys, I'm way too busy with like, you know, getting ready for college and like, you know, right. the school musical, no way. Meanwhile, you know, I was already auditioning. So I, yeah, I got up and I told them all, I was like, hey, I auditioned for this movie and I got it. and. Like from that minute, it was just like, yeah, we went to prom and I remember getting to prom and there was three dozen long stem red roses that said, welcome to the hairspray family. And like- I'm like crying. I called my mom up and I was like, mom. And this was like at a country club among I was like, can you come pick up? I got a flower arrangement from the director of Hairspray. Can you come pick it up? So like my mom came to prom to pick up the flowers. It was a whole trip. And what was so, it's so funny how things work out and are just written in the stars. You know, like you were saying after, after prom is a big deal. Everybody goes to the shore, they go to the city. We went to the city and um, I remember we were on a party bus and everybody's having a blast listening to music and somebody yelled i'm hungry and we were all like okay we're all hungry so we decided <laughs> to pull over the bus driver pulled over and we all got out at this diner and i believe it was on 52nd street and it said cosmic diner and i turned around and i was looking at the hairspray theater the neil simon theater i was directly across the street from it i was like wow this is wild this that just was your crazy. moment. That was my moment. I was like, I had already gotten the part, but I went to prom and then now it just cemented it that, yup, I really did get it. This is your future. This is, it's literally staring at you right in the face. And I remember like looking at my friends and I was like, I remember in that moment, like they were all like going to go party and, you know, go to a club. And I was like, I think I should go home because I have a feeling like things are going to get busy. And I went home, I went to sleep at a reasonable hour and thank God I did. Cause the next morning I woke up and my mom woke me up with, Oh my God, CAA is on the phone and ICM and all of these talent agencies and Fox. And she's like, what do we do? And it's, yeah, from there on, here we are. Oh my goodness. What, like, what a journey. And like, seriously written in the stars to like end up like randomly at a diner in front of that theater that's of just so special Manhattan, that's what i'm saying like <laughs> right? anybody who's never been to manhattan they're a dime a dozen like they're like starbucks they're everywhere yeah like that was the one that we ended up in front of so yeah it was pretty magical that is so cool so after Hairspray, like, what have you been up to? What's your journey been since? It's been, a, it's been a wild journey. It's been intense at times. It's been exciting. Um, I went on, right after Hairspray, I went and I jumped into an indie film. 
uh, called Harold with Cuba Gooding Jr. and Ali Sheedy and Spencer Breslin. And we actually filmed that in my hometown. So I oh, went that's so cool. back to Great Neck after filming Hairspray, I went back to Great Neck and we filmed it in my old middle school. It was so, so cool. Such a time warp. Like I was like, thank God. Cause I remember growing up for me, middle school is like the worst time of my life. I just hated it. Like it was just, mm -hmm. I was uncomfortable with myself, uncomfortable with just school in general. And I remember just middle school, I was like, no. And to go back and walk in there, but to be filming a movie there and not have to stay there for class. I was like, now, now this is a way I can do middle school. I can get yeah. out this way. Um, and so after that, I went on to do a Lifetime movie. And then I, I was so lucky to be asked to be on Ugly Betty and Smash. And um, I did those shows. And then I did a show for ABC Family called Huge out here in California. And that was a lot of fun. And I really, I found myself really living in the indie pool for a little while. I did films like Waiting for Forever um, with uh, um, incredible actors like Rachel Bilson and it was Tom Sturridge. And then one of my favorite films recently in the past few years that I did was called The Last Movie Star. And that was Burt Reynolds' last film. And so to be able to work with him and and just have that greatness just experience it was what was like what was what what was meeting him like just you know what it was it was funny because meeting him I was, I was meeting him at such a point in my life that you know again it's funny how people come into your lives and you don't they're supposed to be just a co-star but Bert almost took on like this like I want to say almost like uncle grandfather type of role with me um it was at a point in my life where I was you know I was in a very very bad relationship um it was it was not healthy mm -hmm. and in fact I I ended it while on set before I walked on to a scene with Bert the first before meeting Bert the, before like yeah, I, and I remember I had all this dialogue, I had this huge monologue, and I'm like, all of these nerves, and then I walked onto set, and there he was, and I was like, oh. I mean, this is a man that my grandparents raised me on his movies, right. I was a huge fan, and then I got to know him and talk to him, and he asked me to sing for him while I was on set. And I said, sure. I said, I'm going to sing you my favorite song ever. And I think he was going to, I think he was thinking that I was going to sing like something of, you know, an artist of today or, you know. Yeah. And I said, I'm going to sing you Crazy by Patsy Cline because that's my favorite song. My nan raised me on Patsy. And he looked at me and he said, Patsy was one of my best friends. And from that oh. minute on, Bert and I were like this. He had to sing in the movie and I'll never forget. I had already rapped. I had come back to New York and I got a call and they said, Bert has a question for you. I said, sure. Yeah. They said, he has to sing a song called Cuddle Up a Little Closer by Dean Martin. I said, I know it. They said, he wants to know if you'll learn it and teach it to him. And I was like, wow what is happening in my life right now? Like this right. is Bert Reynolds. He could, he could call Barbara Streisand or like Liza Minnelli and they'll answer the phone and like teach it. You know, I was like the fact that he trusted me and, and just thought of me, he was such a kind, gentle soul and like working with him. It gets me choked up because I miss him so yeah. much, but working with him was one of the greatest blessings of my life because when they named that movie the last movie star, they were totally on target. He was he was such a great legend icon, but what a kind and gentle soul. And like I so while it's been interesting, while I've had these, you know, massive things like hairspray, right. littler indie films, you know, my career has gone up and down and all around and some people have said, oh, she's gone and hasn't done that much or whatever. People don't know the experiences that I've had. That's, That's what's so important to me. 
that's what I take away. That's what mm -hmm. I put on this pillow every night and go to sleep with yeah. the, the chance that the time that I got to sing for Bert and hang out in his trailer and hear stories about deliverance, you know, I, and the bandit, you know, like you're with greatness. So you, are, you got to live with and know someone really special. And that's because you're really special too. Like there's something that happens. I firmly believe, sorry, about crying. <laughs> I like genuinely believe that like people do cross paths for a reason. And like, what an amazing story and gift that you were given. Can, and this is going to be like really cheesy and you can totally say no, but can you sing a little bit of what you sang for Bert? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, I'll never forget. We were on set and Clark Duke, who played my boyfriend in that movie, who I loved dearly, told Bert, you know, Nikki was in Hairspray. And I guess they thought I was going to sing a Hairspray song or something else. And but I know I had to go with my favorite and I, I sang it for my nan. It was her favorite song. And she was the one that always told me to follow my dream. She used to say to me as a little girl, oh, I'm going to cry. She used to say, I'm going to see you up on that big screen one day. And I would say, nan, like she, she thought bigger than I did. I mm -hmm. thought I would just be on stage. I would say, Nana, I'll be on stage, maybe. And she'd say, mark my words, you're going to be on that big screen. And the song I sang was, crazy, I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. I'm crazy, crazy for feeling so blue it's one of my favorites so that is so beautiful nikki thank you for sharing that with me i just You're welcome any anytime i get to sing that song like it just brings me back to her yeah you know, being a kid with her singing it to her and singing it to bert you know, yeah now it, it has a double meaning to me yeah that is so um special and actually part of my magazine that I'm doing is um my grand meant so much to me and I just happened to be visiting her in Florida just as a girl's trip I hadn't seen her since my wedding and so I went down because I had a week off from work because my bosses were going to Mexico I nanny during the day um and so I went down, I drove my car from Ohio down to Florida. And the first night I got there, I don't know what happened. Her eyes went back and I called for the medics. They brought her in and they asked me, does she have a DNR? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just your, I'm just her granddaughter. I was here to just visit. This isn't supposed to be happening right now. And I'm like, I don't know, but do whatever you can to save her. I don't know what the answer is, but I know you save her. And they were able to save her. And she was alive for about another week. And all of her kids were able, and she has five kids. They were all able to come and say goodbye. And she was able to like say thank you to me for like giving that to her. But like, it's more than that. Like I thank her for giving me everything like I have her perfume is like up there and just everything I do so in this magazine I'm having a section of it and it's going to be called Dear Grand and it's just going to be I'm going to start it with me writing my letter to her but then I want to open up to other people that you know sometimes you don't have a place to like send these thoughts but they need to be shared because you're not alone in this grief. And so many people have these connections with people that they've lost and they need to express this in some way. So that like, I'm having my dear Graham thing. Love and that. like, if you want to contribute at all, I, I would love to, because let me tell you something. I, you know, my nan was super, super, you know, important to me. And, um, we lost her. Actually, I was auditioning for Hairspray the Musical on Broadway while I was learning the material for her funeral. And it was just an intense time. And like, 
But what I've learned is, and I was just telling my brother this yesterday, um, because unfortunately his best friend had passed away. And I said, Joe, just because he's passed doesn't mean that he's not still here with you. I said, he is on your journey with you. I mean, this tattoo right here, I don't know if you could see it. Yeah. This kid, and I recently got it for my birthday this year. I just, I went and I got it because that was the nickname that my uncle always called me was kid and he was my best friend in the whole world and unfortunately in 2008 after hairspray after all the excitement and all of that I lost him to, to suicide and that was the biggest thing that shook up my world it was like you could be at the top of the world and have a movie and all this excitement but you know, you never know what's going on with your loved ones or, or with people. And, and so he wanted to be an actor. So I very much feel that by me being on my journey, by you being on your journey, we're still carrying on their legacy with us and still making them proud. I know yeah. I can do it. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing all of that with me. I mean, it's, just it it helps I know it helps me to be able to talk about it and I just appreciate you being comfortable enough to share you know Absolutely. these are the things you, it's about the experiences and the way you know how people touch your heart and your soul and you know it's you could have all the money in the world and all of the except, but if you don't have that human connection with someone, if somebody, you know, like if you just haven't felt that, then what is it all for? You know, the feeling of love and being loved just for who you are is just the greatest thing in the world. And when you have, I think there's something also so special with grandparents or, you know, uncles, it, there's just, yeah, there's just something super special. So I was very thankful that after, you know, losing my grandparents, I was able to almost kind of get a surrogate one in Bert there for a little bit. And now that, you know, I, in with everything I do, I'm like, I know you're up there, BR. I know you're watching. <laughs> and he is. And so like, how, what are you working on now, Nikki? So now I just moved out to LA. I'm out here, um, new chapter, new adventure. I'm filming a new movie, which is why I'm blonde. <laughs> all, all jazzed up here. I'm normally like, you know, normally have my dark hair, my signature, but um, yeah, no, I'm out here filming a new movie. I'm really excited about it. It's something totally different for me. It's a straight drama. It's really imperative to the times right now. It's about social injustice and I'm just really excited to be a part of it. I'm working with an incredible young actor, Aubrey Joseph, who I just adore. So it's been a really, it's been a really nice experience and it's been interesting filming during COVID, but yeah, it's, it's happening. So what was so. it like being like around people again? <laughs> It was interesting. I was like, cause you know, sets are such like huggy environments. Everybody's like so happy to be there. And, you know, we all hang out at the lunch table, usually not anymore. Like everybody's, you know, you know, separated and, you know, in their trailers just for safety reasons. But yeah. um, it's all, it's all, it still feels, you know, good and, and right. And it's, it's good to be back and just um, to be around creative people and just, yeah. Putting out a fun product. Do you know when uh, this movie will be released? Is there a time frame yet? I have no idea. We're still in the <laughs> middle of filming it because it's been going up and down with the schedules here. But yeah. Hopefully sometime next year. That'd be awesome. I, That's I can't so exciting. Wait. I've seen little little snippets and I'm like, oh, I'm so, I'm so excited. And you said it's a drama? It is. Can you oh. tell us anything about your character? She, well, I will say she is nothing like any character I've ever played before. Um, she is not like Tracy. She's not super spunky and like, there's no singing and dancing. I'm not <laughs> riding on garbage trucks. Um, 
she she's had a hard life and she um she just wants to be loved and she doesn't know where to go to get that that, that excuse me that love or how to go about it and uh she finds herself in a very interesting predicament and how she gets out of it is even more interesting <laughs> I am so excited for this. Yeah. So how do you get into character for these kind of roles? Do you just like read the script and you're just like, or like, is, do you have a process? For me, you know, I read the script. I, I'm a hover. I hover my lines. Like I'll show you. I, I write out all my lines, uh, <laughs> my little journal here. My oh my little, gosh, wait, my hold on. Your pug journal. I love Look, it. I have a sparkly gold journal too. <laughs> Mine says pug life because, you know. I love that. And, uh, I actually stole it from my mom. And I write out all my lines and I keep them because for some reason in my handwriting, they make sense to me. And mm -hmm. I just, I literally sleep with this thing. I carry it wherever I go um, until the project's over so that I have my lines with me 24 seven, I know. And um, music is also a big preparation for me. Music is something that can get me to like an emotional state if I need to be mm -hmm. in one, you know, all I need to do is- What, what do you listen to? Oh, well, you know, it's funny for this character, I actually created a playlist for her. So what I do is when I go on to set, I'll, you know, on the drive there, I'll start by listening. Like that's how I get into it in the morning is I'll start listening to her playlist. So yeah. when I get to set, I'm already in her mindset and it's all the songs that, you know, kind is of- Is it on Spotify? It is. I'm gonna ask you to change the title of it and then send it to me. And I'm gonna write out a little blurb of who I think your character is. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, she's, she's, she's a fun one. She's, um, she's somebody who I think, you know, a lot of people will identify with, um, but at the same time, yeah, she, she's, gonna, she's gonna trip a lot of people up for sure. I'm super excited for this. Um, so what what was it like moving out to Cali from the East Coast? You know, I'm a New Yorker through and through. It's in my blood. Like, you know, when I get when I get off the Long Island Railroad in Penn Station, and I'm not being cheesy, like I feel like the heartbeat of Manhattan yeah. under my feet. Like you can feel it pumping under your feet. I love New York with all my heart. It's everything to me. I miss it. But I will say being out here in California, um, you know, I'm excited. It's it's my chance to I'm, you know, living on my own and and really starting my production company up because I I realized that I don't just want to act. I want to write. I want to produce. I want to yeah. have my hands in, in all the fish bowls and see what's going on. So um, it's a it's scary at times. I miss my family. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I'm 32. I'm like, Mom, I miss you. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> I FaceTime <laughs> with them all day, all the time. But for me, I think it's really exciting because like I said, you know, my uncle wanted to be an actor and he was, he was out here for a while. And so I was telling my brother yesterday, I said, I just feel so connected to uncle Steve when I'm out here. I said, even though I I'm solo out here, I'm not, you know, right. I know he's got my back and I'm very lucky to over the past 14 years of like after hairspray coming out here for auditions for work, I have my core group of people that are like family and I'm very lucky that, you know, they're close by and I get to see them. And honestly, some of them are my friends from Hairspray. Like, you know, we see each other yeah. all the time. I was just at one of their apartments the other night. I slept on their couch. <laughs> <laughs> Before I moved into my apartment, I was like, his name is Anthony. He's actually, we actually dated way back in the Hairspray days. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hey, can I borrow your couch for two nights before I move into my apartment? He was like, of course. So, Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, we're still very much a big, crazy, wild hairspray family. I love that so much. You guys need to do a reunion, just like a little, like a Zoom reunion. I'm just saying, like, I don't know what's, I'm totally down. 
let's put it together. I mean, I just totally invited myself, but. Are you kidding? <laughs> You're my plus one. I will put it that way. Taylor, okay. Guys, just so you know, when it's happening, Cameron and I are in charge. Yes. <laughs> Um, so what's, uh, what's your like dating life? I know that this year has been really huge for you, Nikki. Yeah, it has been, it's been massive. Um, yeah, this, this has been a, a, a year of, uh, just really just coming into my own and I mm -hmm. think, and really being myself and, um, yeah, this summer I came out and, um, it was, it was very liberating. It was scary. It was exciting. Uh -huh. It was, I, I didn't know, you know, but I knew that this is me and either, you know, take it or leave it, you know, either because I'm going to continue to be me and go on with my life. So, you know, either you're on the Blonsky train or you're off. It's up to you. <laughs> and so um, I was really excited to come out and, of course, we decided to do it in total, you know, Nikki fashion and just make it fun with, we did a TikTok and, um, and it was really amazing to see the response back from other members of the community, like people that I've looked up to my whole life, uh -huh. like Billie Jean King and Melissa Etheridge. And I mean, just, just welcoming me to the community and I was just blown away and it's still, it's still so surreal. Um, dating has never been easy <laughs> like <laughs> after like you know because it was interesting in high school I was that girl that was like super focused on like the school shows and like getting into the colleges and like you know all of that yeah I never really dated whatever and I just so it was interesting I dated in my 20s and whatever but it was really you know the summer when I was like when I decided to come out with the news, you know, and just let everybody know, nope, I haven't been dating boys. Um, <laughs> FYI. And um, it was really cool. And yeah, it's been great to see um, how accepting my fans have been. And I've gotten some amazing um, DMs from them saying that after yeah. I came out, you know, they were inspired to come out. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's just wild to me like I'm just I'm just glad that people are just finally in 2021 able to to be who they are and, and um, celebrated for who they are and so did, has had your family known um my family they didn't they really didn't I mean a little they did and they didn't like they knew kind of um but at the same time like we never really had the conversation and then one day I just had the conversation with them I pulled my brother and his fiance aside they were the first two and I was like hey I I just want to let you know like um you guys are gonna see a girl pick me up tonight <laughs> for a date you know um, and there we go. And, and we had the conversation and then uh, I told my parents and, and they were just super accepting. And, um, yeah. And then I, I actually, I had, you know, I went through, uh, a, a, I was in a relationship, um, and clearly not in it anymore, but, <laughs> um, but it was, it was a relationship that, well, made me lose my earring apparently. <laughs> Um, made me lose more than that. My mind, no, <laughs> no. Actually, it actually. I'm kidding. Uh, in in all seriousness, my relationship with my first girlfriend um, really made me believe in love. She is still to this day. Uh, you know, I haven't spoken to her in, in God knows how long, but she's somebody that I I think of with a lot of respect. And I thank her for showing me that, you know, love is real and I can be loved for just Nikki. And I think that was my favorite part of that relationship was being loved for just who I was um, and not for Nikki Blonsky because dating in, in this business is tricky enough. And wow. then, you know, putting the whole Tracy turn leg thing on top of it can be, you know, it's it's interesting it's like because you don't know are people with you because for you 
right for me or or is it going to benefit them or what's the agenda what's going on here so um you know i think i think for right now i'm single <laughs> i'm single <laughs> i went into this new movie purposely single um because i said i can't have anything distracting distracting me you know clouding my my head and I just need to go in, you know, open-minded and, and just play this character. So I am single right now, but, um, you know, who knows? Who knows what can happen in the future? There's always someone out there for everybody. I, I mean, I believe that. And you know what? If there's not, you're already paving this beautiful journey that, like, you've got your self-love. And that's Honestly, can enough. I tell you, it's, that's what this year has been all about for me, like, after I had that relationship with her and I was like, it was a great relationship and you know, it ended and I was like, I had that love, but now I have a whole other love for myself and a whole other respect for myself. And I was talking to my mom the other day. <laughs> no, sorry. I was talking to my manager and I was like, you know, I was talking about, oh, well, you know, I have my adult bed now. And I was like, you know, in case I want to do adult things. And I was like, but you know what? I was like, I'm not because I am focusing on work. But at the same time, I said, I really enjoy laying down at night and just being with myself and being at peace and not having to, you know, worry, um, you know, especially when you're playing a hefty role like this, you know, you, it, you, I, I'm a person that always wants to make sure all of my partner's needs are met and I want to make sure I'm making them happy and all of that. Uh -huh. So I feel like, especially when I'm working, I'm like, oh gosh, am I giving every, everything the attention that it deserves and everyone the attention that they deserve? So I feel like right now it's good that I'm single for the role, but who knows? We'll see. You never know what tomorrow brings. <laughs> I'm sure she's out there somewhere, Taylor. <laughs> Well, I can't wait to meet her someday. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> you and me both. So what have you been binging during this time? Or do you keep your head like clear of TV while you're filming? Um, when I'm filming, I usually don't have too much time to watch TV. I'll fall asleep to something maybe at night. Um, but now that we've had the holidays and then we had a break, I was like studying, studying, studying. And then I was like, okay, well, I can't sit here and just go over my lines for like four weeks straight or else I'll go crazy. I was like, so, all right, let yourself watch something. Excuse me, hiccups. And, um, oh gosh, I went down the Real Housewives rabbit hole. <laughs> yes. Which franchise? Oh, New York. New yes. Jersey, uh, OC. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, OC is a hot mess. Well, you know, um, I'm just saying, I'm so glad that we have my girl, Gina Kirschenheider on there repping for Long Island. Yes, Thank Gina. Goodness, right? Yes, everybody see, we had to get a little East Coast out there on the West Coast to keep everybody sane. That is so true. And that's the only thing that's doing it right now. She's, she's the only one. I mean, I actually talked to Jacob, uh, Bronwyn's son, and that was such a fun and interesting kind of conversation because he, you know, he's living this in real life. And he was like such a wise kid. Cause he was like, I see these women throwing hate at each other but they're doing it for the reaction. So if you go into it knowing that they're doing it for the reaction, it's not going to affect you. And so I'm like, you're how smart. These kids are like, yeah. Right? Yeah. I love, yeah. He has it figured out. He knows. I mean, it's true though. It's, I was watching some of the New York stuff and I was like, Oh my gosh. Like, wow. You know, I also go, I sit here and I go, but at that age, like, I hope I have that energy to be like running around <laughs> town, causing yes. havoc. Sometimes, 
nonsense. Like I'm 32 and I'm like in bed at like nine o'clock. I'm like, I'm going to watch my Guy Fieri on Diners, <laughs> Crescents and Dives. Like that's my Friday night. And like they're running around town having a blast. So I don't know if I want that energy when I'm that age. Like I, I look forward to my bed now. <laughs> Yeah, I was, this is my new best friend. I just bought it. It's brand new, and I've never, I'm so excited to spend time with with it every <laughs> night. Every night. So yeah, they can have the nights out on the town. I'll be here with uh, <laughs> this little guy. And, and we're, we're so who's your who's your favorite housewife? Out of all of them, New York. Let's start with New York. Okay, New York. Mm. Um, see it's that's hard I, I i do like leah the new i love writer. leah i think she's edgy and fun and she like she when she says she, what did she said i elevate this shit i was yeah. like that's great girl you do elevate this shit she does she brings she adds zest and life to it she very much you know woke it up i feel yeah um, but i've always you know dorinda always cracks me up like she just thinks <laughs> that's what she thinks like you know, it is what it is. And Clip. <laughs> unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, and, you know, I always feel like Sonia is just always trying, you know. <laughs> she's, I love Sonia so much because she's just like this entity that's like floating in the wind and she's just going to do what it's Sonia does. Spirit. And yeah. I love her for it. Yeah. I would have to say, yeah, Sonia, I do like Sonia. And, you know, the performer in me, I will say, <laughs> I when Luann goes on one of her cabaret, like, I mean, I, I'm, I have to run with her. Because she's <laughs> like, she is such a cabaret star. And oh, she actually, she really puts on a good show. I mean, she does. And, it, you know, and I just, I respect her, her hustle. She's they're all they're all a lot of fun they're all super yeah fun. I so. think New York out of all of the franchises is just like the best for sure yeah it's what it's <laughs> obviously it's it holds a special place <laughs> in my heart because it's just I love it it's one of my favorites and then of course Jersey but like my favorite 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 housewife is OG Caroline Manzo love love Manzo. Caroline classy lady who holds it down i've had her on my podcast and she is just the sweetest coolest just like most warm loving woman i love her to death i think she's and she so loves great. her family she's all about family <laughs> i interviewed her she was in her apron she had just cooked like a big sunday dinner and she <laughs> had her like granddaughter marky with her and i was just like I love you. You are incredible. Like, yeah, I love her. I think she's definitely one of the housewives that I would be comfortable if I had a daughter. I would be like, look up to her. Look up to yeah, her. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a strong woman. That's somebody to look up to. Yeah. So I actually, I have a friend that is single, and I have this like vision in my head of setting her up with Chris. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I'm going to, like, send you her info. Because, like, I just, I, for, like, years now, I'm just, like, Kat and Chris are, like, a match made in He's heaven. adorable. All of the men, I mean, Alvi and, and Lauren, they're all just beautiful souls. Like, I'm, I don't, I'm talking like I know them and I go over and like have Sunday dinner with them. I don't. But like, I met them over FaceTime and they were like so lovely. Like, and just the way Caroline speaks of her family, you know, it's like when somebody speaks that highly of their family, you can tell the love is truly, really there. And like, mm -hmm. you can tell like, her husband adores her and like isn't that the type of relationship that we all long for like yes. she's been going strong forever so kudos to them I'm a big Manzo fan <laughs> I know bring back Caroline I miss her so much I know we're just like, give her her own show like I remember they had their own show and I watched yeah they did I watched yeah. it my family and I watched it because we were just like we we are the biggest Caroline Manzo fan my dad is like after I did my podcast with her, my dad was like, did you talk to Caroline yet? Can you tell her I said hello? I'm like, 
this coming from the man who like hardly you know like ever like talks about like he'll ask little things about my career but like he was so excited that I was talking to <laughs> I love that so much <laughs> Yeah, so for me, it's, I've, I'm always binging either Housewives or Guy Fieri, like Food Network. Those are the two. Bravo or Food Network. <laughs> I mean, I love it. That's why, that's like my mind, I call it like my mindless entertainment, but like, it's not even mindless because I'm sitting there and I realize that like, I'm really invested in these people's lives. <laughs> Here. like I watch below deck and like all the relationships that they get into and I'm like and then I'm like I heard Hannah just had a baby and I'm like but wait by who I don't know who she was dating last season is it the same guy like yeah we get so invested in these relationships and it's <laughs> it's amazing and I actually I'll tell you I recently met Andy Cohen like I guess about a year ago now and I was just like I love you like thank you yeah. for the network because like it is just like, it's great. It's so much fun. It's just You fun. can always turn it on and it's fine. Like it's always okay. <laughs> yeah, it'll always just take you somewhere else for at least yeah. a couple minutes. Yeah. Speaking of the Manzos though, they should totally just get their own network and just like Agreed. have like the Manzo network and just like stream all the different fans, like all of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm with it. I'm with it. I think Vino and Lauren should have their own show. Everybody yeah, they care like have a cooking show. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm with it. <laughs> so I always like to ask people what their five year plan is or their five year dream. Because, you know, this is all new to me too, but you're one of the first people that I've talked to. So I want to come back in five years and catch up with everybody that I've talked to and see how far you surpassed what you're telling me right now. That's really good. Um, hmm. Five years from now. Well, um, well, I believe, you know, you get what you put out. And if you put out, you know, good energy, you're going to get it back. So I'm going to put out positive energy and say that I will still be making movies. You can bet your bottom dollar that. Yeah. I am just, I'm just obsessed with being in this business and acting and, and just following my dreams. Um, so I will be, you know, acting, hopefully producing. I just started getting my hand in at that and writing as well. Um, hopefully my book will be done by then. Um, and my screenplay will be done and that movie will be made. Um, and who knows, maybe, maybe that person that we were talking about that's out there that she doesn't know that she's my soulmate, maybe she'll like wake up and find me and, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll meet in the next five years. Who knows? Um, I just, you know, as long as I have my family and my best friends are Amy and Gino um, and my managers and just my little team. And I get to sing and act and I'm a happy camper. I don't, I'm not a person of, I don't need a lot. As long as, you know, I have a place to rest my head and, and everybody's safe and happy and healthy, then, then I'm happy, so. I love that. I love that so much. I mean, thank you. Thank you, Nikki, for just sharing all of this with me. It's been so special and nice talking to you. And I can't wait to hear more about your screenplay and your book and all of that too. Well, thank you for doing what you're doing because <laughs> I'm telling you when, you know, when you do something, you know, and it's a passion of yours, but when you're doing it, with somebody else's legacy, you know, and you're doing it also for them a little bit for them, like you're doing this for your grand, it means so much more. So please know that she's up there and she's looking down on you and she's smiling and she's with you every single day. So yeah. So is your Nan and I hope they're up there just watching this conversation right now and they playing are. Mahjong. I don't know if your Nan played Mahjong, but my, my Nan was taking bingo. Oh my God. <laughs> Bingo was everything. So. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe you and I, hopefully when the pandemic lifts, 
we'll play some bingo, have some wine, and we'll talk about, I don't know, what was one of, like, I remember one of my Nan and I's favorite shows was the Golden Girls. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My grand love Betty White too. Like, I mean, who doesn't, right? <laughs> Legend. Legend. That's, Absolutely. that's what, like, when people say to me, like, where do you, who do you hope to have a career like? Or I always say, like, the three women that I, like, totally look up to and idolize are always Angela Lansbury, Julie Andrews, and Betty White. What a list. Yeah. Nikki, so, like, three women hello. That can, like, bow down, like, if I could have, you know, follow in any of their footsteps, just because they've done, they've done incredible projects, but they've done it their way, and they've mm -hmm. kept it classy. And they've stayed true to who they were the entire time, and didn't get tied up into sometimes the, the darkness that can consume people. Nope, you always have to stay true to your heart. Nikki, thank you so, so, so much. And I can't wait to just see where the rest of your story brings you. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks again. Thank you so much. Same to you. Be well. Stay safe. Okay. I will. You too. Thank you. Bye. You're the brightest